What's up everyone? Welcome back to another review and this time we're taking a look at The Flash, the 13th entry into the ill-fated DC Extended Universe. The Flash is directed by Andy Muschietti of the It movies and written by Christina Hodgson. The overall plot line of this film is as follows. Barry Allen goes back in time to prevent the death of his mother. In so doing so, he creates an alternate timeline in which Superman never makes it to Earth and General Zod is invading the Earth. So now he must team up with an alternate version of himself and the Michael Keaton version of Batman along with Supergirl to stop General Zod's invasion of Earth. So yeah, that is the overall plot of The Flash. A, an extremely convoluted mess that tries to adapt the Flashpoint storyline but clearly has a hard time doing so. So yeah, <clears throat> let's... Let me do my best to try and go over this movie because I do got some things that I do. I do have some positives, but a lot of a lot of what I have is a lot of negatives. And it's not the negatives that, that because it's a bad movie. It's the negatives because it's a frustrating movie to watch because there's a lot of good surface level things in this movie. The problem is, is that you can clearly tell that it was a victim of all the drama that went behind making this movie. You can see the drama of multiple directors of multiple writers, of Ezra Miller being a complete dipshit behind the scenes with his bullshit shenanigans, and the fact that they're just throwing shit against the wall just to try and get a movie made. <clears throat> like, you can see all that in this movie, and yeah, it does affect the coherency of this movie, because there are a lot of moments where this movie can be completely incoherent. Uh, a lot of the story doesn't make, a, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That and a lot of the supporting cast is very underutilized. And I will illustrate how I think they were very underutilized and what I would have done much, much differently with them. Because this movie's biggest flaw is the... It's pretty much the supporting cast being utterly just completely and totally wasted. And screen time just being given to just goofy, just unfunny nonsense. And the flash... And the, and the fact that this movie recycles... Uh, recycles superman villains is an instant flaw because i'm not watching man of steel i, I, I want to watch the flash fight flash villains i don't want to watch him fight superman villains it doesn't work for me i don't like it at all <clears throat> so yeah with all the preliminaries out of the way let's get the positives out of the way first the one thing that i'll say that, that i do like about this movie is that i do like andy muschietti as a director and to this man's credit he did his absolute best to try and make this movie look visually pleasing there are certain scenes where i think he utilized the flash and the speed force very very well that's something that he adapted from zach schneider because zach i thought one of the best aspects of zach schneider and his directing of the flash is the utilization of slow motion and how it creates the whole idea that the flat that barry's moving so fast that everything around him is moving so slow andy muschietti to his credit tries to adapt that in some areas and i like that <clears throat> that's good that's good that's one of the visual aspects of this movie that I do like. Um, in terms of this movie's cinematography, it looks okay. It's not the greatest looking movie, but it's not the worst looking movie. I mean, the CGI in this movie does look really, really fucking horrible. I'll give you, I mean, I can't defend that. I can't defend the PS1 graphics of this fucking thing. <clears throat> like, there are some, C some of the CGI looks decent, and then some of the CGI looks laugh out loud bad. Spider-Man from 2002 has got better CGI than this movie, and this is and this is a 20. And this movie and, and Spider-Man 2002 is a movie that's over 20 years old, and this movie is just came out during the summer, <clears throat> so that's laughable. Uh, in terms of the supporting cast, in terms of the acting wise, every actor did a decent job. I don't like Ezra Miller as an actor. I don't like his portrayal as Barry Allen. I don't like the overall. I just don't like the writing of Barry Allen as a whole, just going back from his debut in the Justice League movie. I don't like seeing Barry Allen as this like neurotic dude who is just antisocial. That's not the Barry Allen that I like. I like my Barry Allen to be more like the Flash TV show, like Grant Justin, somebody with a sense of humor, whose humor is not always cringe, but is also more social, is, but is also more sociable and more likable. And even though he's went through a personal tragedy, he doesn't, <clears throat> He does his best to, you know, keep a bright... He does his best to see the bright side of things. This version, like, Ezra Miller's version of Barry Allen can go two ways. When he tries to be funny, it's cringe. When he tries to be serious, he's too brooding for my taste. Like, I just don't like the direction that, they, that The Flash has been in since day one. And I was never the biggest supporter of Ezra Miller in the role to begin with. Because I just don't like him as an actor. I don't think he's all that great. 
Now, granted, maybe some people like him as an actor and they've seen him in things where he was actually good. Good for you. He's not somebody whose moves I will seek out because I just don't care for him. But I'll say this, he does have some legitimate good moments in this movie. They mostly involve his mother and <clears throat> it mostly involves his mother and the moments those two share, share between each other. But you know, those moments are few and far between. And I do like some of the, and I do like some of his scenes with Bruce, with Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne. I do like seeing the fanboyishness because in the comics and in the Justice League cartoon, the Flash really more or less is uh, looks up to Batman as an idol. So I do like how they retained that. So I don't, so I'm not going to criticize that because I actually do like that aspect. <clears throat> uh, in terms of everyone else, you know, Kelsey Clemens returns in the role of Iris West. She's completely underutilized. If you blink, you miss her entire role. The movie sets up the budding, the budding romance between Barry Allen and Iris and goes absolutely nowhere with it. She appears in the first 30 minutes and then she does, and then she comes back for the last five minutes. But all in all, she has maybe five minutes of screen time and has maybe just a couple of conversations with Barry that don't really, that don't really mean anything to the overall run. And if anything, the conversation with Barry just gives him the idea to go back in time to prevent his father from being arrested and his mother from being murdered. <clears throat> That's basically it. In terms of the, a, a in terms of the budding romance, yeah, sure, they make reference to it. Bear, when Barry's having a conversation with his dad, he says, "Maybe you should pursue Iris." We don't get nothing. We don't get anything. Uh, this movie, sh more or less, should between the two timelines should have been Barry with Iris and having a and having a relationship with Iris. Maybe even have her involved in a way with with the movie more, since Iris is a reporter. You know, maybe Barry could utilize her as a way to, you know, clear his dad's name since this, since most of Barry's uh, plot involves him preventing his mother from being murdered and his dad from being arrested for the crime. But, yeah, that's seldomly done in this movie. In a, it, well, it's not done good enough in a satisfying way, in my opinion. <clears throat> and then you got the return of Ben Affleck as Batman. It was a fun little scene. It's okay. You know, Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, she comes in for like two seconds, says hello, then leaves, and that's basically it. We also get the return of Jeremy Irons as Alfred, and I've always liked seeing Jeremy Irons as Alfred, and I'm not going to lie. I do, I, I got a couple of chuckles out of his bantering with Barry Allen, mostly because, mostly more because of Jeremy Irons. <clears throat> uh, now, in terms of how they utilize Ben Affleck's Batman, it's give and take. Uh, I like the, op the opening action sequence in this movie. It reminds me of a Justice League cartoon in which you get members of the League fighting off a fight, fending off a threat. In this movie, the uh, Batman and the Flash team up to try to stop a bunch of terrorists from blowing up a Gotham hot from glowing from <clears throat> from blowing up Gotham in general. And you get the infamous now infamous scene of Barry of the Flash putting a baby into a microwave. Yeah. It's one of those kind of movies. <clears throat> uh, okay, okay, uh, all right, he puts a baby in the microwave. Now, the whole opening fight scene with Flash and Batman against the terrorists, it is what it is. It's just a paint by numbers action sequence. You have your cringe, you have the, what passes as comedy in this movie. You have the whole idea of, of uh, Flash trying to, uh, having like a, um, like a carbonate, like a, like a watch that, that, that tracks how much energy he has. Which I'll give Mushiati credit from that. It's something that came from the Zack Schneider movies because if you actually pay attention to the Zack Schneider movies, Barry states that when he uses the Speed Force, it, his metabolism kind of drops. So he always has to. So he's in a constant state where he has to keep his energy up. So having that tracker on his wrist, okay, I like it. It's a it's a nice it's a nice little extension from what happened. In, it's a nice little extension. I think I think I think I think the Flash forgets about it as the movie progresses, and, we, and it ends up not being uh, and it ends up being forgotten about. <clears throat> that's just how I feel about it, especially when you get to the third act. But that's uh, but you know that's part of the course for superhero movies. They introduce certain they introduce certain things that could play a role from a, from a dramatical standpoint, and then it completely forgets about it as the movie goes on, because that's where the movie because that more along the lines of, of a movie like this. Once it goes along, it gets more incoherent and becomes more of a mess plot-wise. <clears throat> so yeah, when all said and done, Flash and Barry, they stop, not uh, Flash and Barry, Flash and Batman stop the terrorists from Gotham, from, got, from blowing up the hospital. They come across Wonder Woman, who has Batman on the last show of truth. And this scene, I absolutely despise. I hate 
this scene for the simple reason because they made Batman once again I don't know what it was because Justice League made Batman look like a joke and this movie continued that bullshit by making Batman look like a joke creating the whole idea because Batman gets himself uh, accidentally gets tangled in the lasso of truth and he makes this crack about how he became Batman as a way as a way to because he couldn't get over his parents death and saying that he should be using his wealth for something else and not going and not being a vigilante <clears throat> This completely spits in the face of what Batman stands for and why ba and why Bruce became Batman. Bruce became Batman not only because of the death of his parents, so that way he could prevent another child from going through what he went through, hence why he's Batman. Not only that, Gotham is a broken city and it needs something like Batman to protect it. Just by even though this was done for comedic value, it just shows me that Christina Hodson has no general idea of who Batman is. And she just did it to make a mockery of the character. I don't like that. That's an instant fail for me. And then you get other cast members like Ron Livingston and Maribel Vendu, who play um, who play Barry's parents, uh, Henry and Nora. And I thought these two were actually pretty good in the movie. I like Ron Livingston, Ron Livingston as Henry Allen. He takes over the role from Billy Crudup, who was who played Barry's dad in in the uh, Justice League movie. And I thought Livingston was fine in the role. I liked him. Uh, he was decent. Nothing, no, nothing special, but nothing bad either. I like some of the scenes that he does have with Ezra Miller, and these scenes are actually, and these scenes are genuine. And this is where Ezra Miller, as an actor, shows flat, shows uh, flashes, no pun intended, of being a very capable actor in my eyes. Like I think when Ezra Miller is doing more of the dramatic parts in this movie, that's where I think he's actually, that's where I think he's actually pretty fine. It, I think he's actually pretty good. When he's trying to do the comedic stuff and the action stuff, he just looks so out of place and just so awkward. <clears throat> but yeah, like the stuff with Barry and his dad, I liked it. Uh, I really like the story of Barry and his mother, Nora. They have a very genuine relationship. I know I, I kind of do like the flashback of young Barry interacting with his parents. <clears throat> you know, that was nice. Uh, and you see that he has a, a strong connection with his mother. So like so it makes a lot of sense that when his mother dies he it, it more or less since and his dad goes to jail you can see how it inspires him to want to become a cop or work in the, or work in the police force as a way to pretty much you know clear clear his dad's name for a crime he clearly did not didn't commit <clears throat> so I liked it that stuff was actually well handled and again a lot of the a, a lot of the best emotional beats come from Barry interacting with his mother Nora and that's again that's where I think Ezra Miller really shines as an actor is when he's doing the more you know is when he's doing the more emotional scenes that's where this that's, and that's where you see the heart of this movie more or less <clears throat> so I don't have much to complain about it that stuff is good it's not all it's not always in the movie those more those scenes of more downtime but they're there and when they are there I think they then they're utilized to the best of their advantage and I wish they I wish they were in a much better movie but that just me personally. <clears throat> uh, in terms of how this movie handles uh, General Zod, and my, uh, listen, it was cool seeing Michael Shannon come back in the role, but again, this goes into the negative column. I do not want to see Superman villains in a Flash movie. I want to see Flash villains in a Flash movie. So yes, the whole point of Flashpoint, of the whole Flashpoint storyline in the comic books is that Barry goes back in time to prevent his mother from being killed. Now, if you read Flash comics and have a base knowledge of it, you know we all know that Eobar, that Eobar Thawne, the reverse, the reverse Flash, Professor Zoom from the 31st century, was the one who killed Barry's mom. <clears throat> now, Andy Muschietti has confirmed in many interviews that Professor Zoom is has is in, is the is the one who is intended to be the killer of Nor of Nora. To which I say. Instead of doing a instead of doing General Zod, why don't you just do Professor Zoom in this movie? <clears throat> That's this movie's biggest problem. Is that Andy Muschietti in an interview clearly stated that in his mind J Professor Zoom killed his mother Nora, to which I say this whole entire movie, the whole point of flat this entire movie should have been more or less based off the Flashpoint more based off the Flashpoint animated movie <clears throat> you know instead of having general zod invading earth just have barry traveling across the timelines trying to find professor zoom and getting revenge on zoom you know flash teaming up with batman and supergirl 
and um, and a and a and an alternate version of himself should have been going up against uh, Professor Zoom, Captain Cold, and his sister, and me and and Captain Boomerang. <clears throat> And uh, don't give me the whole thing of Captain Boomerang being dead because of the Suicide Squad, because they go back to an alternate reality of twenty of twenty thirteen, where Captain Boom where Captain Boomerang, realistically could have been much much more alive. <clears throat> so like yeah, like I think that movie could have been much more fun, you know, f you know Flash and 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 his and this new makeshift Justice League against the Rogues. That could have been a cool movie and a cool story. Instead, we get Flash and his friends against General Zod. And I'm sorry, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see Flash against Superman villains. I think it's bad. I don't. It, I don't like it. I mean, I like Michael Shannon's General Zod, but you can clearly tell that he was sleepwalking in this movie that he didn't want to do it. The same thing goes for Ben Affleck. Like you can tell that Ben Affleck didn't want to do this movie. Even the scene where uh, Flat, where Barry's presenting his theory to him, and and he's clearly stating like, listen, don't do this because you could. This, this could cause a ripple effect that can change everything. But you can tell in that performance that Ben Affleck just looks just tired and just does not want to do this anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. A lot of the acting in this movie, some of the actors are doing a good job. And then you can clearly tell that you see the actors who just don't want to be there or are just going through the motions. Ben Affleck gives the impression of somebody who doesn't want to be there. Michael Shannon gives off the impression of somebody who did not really want to do this. <clears throat> And he stated in an interview that he only did this movie because he got because he got a blessing from Zack Schneider to appear in this movie. It's like this movie told the wrong story. That's just me. It told the wrong story. This should not. This shouldn't even been a Flashpoint storyline. This should have been the Flash versus Reverse Flash. The, his dark, the, his dark mirror, the one who killed his mom. This whole movie should have been should have been the Flash finding out who killed his mother, not him changing time to prevent her death. Or you could still do that, but still keep the reverse Flash as the main villain. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, that's another thing. Uh, my biggest gripe is the overuse of Man of Steel villains, of Superman villains in general. I don't like it. Thought it sucked. <clears throat> now, now the whole idea of having two versions of Barry Allen team together Oh my god, I thought this was the absolute worst aspect of this movie. Seeing Ezra Miller act off himself was just overindulgence. Old Barry Allen, he's already he's already hard to watch in a lot of scenes. Now I have a more young now I, now we have younger Barry Allen who's more energetic. He I wanted to slap the 2013 version of Barry Allen. That's how annoyed I got with him. I didn't think he was funny. I didn't think he was I didn't think he was quirky or cool. I thought he was flat out annoying. And Ezra Miller just annoyed me as in as the younger version of himself. His older version, I don't like that version for a variety of reasons. Mainly because I think I don't think Ezra Miller is a perfect is a good fit for the role. <clears throat> and I just don't like the direction they take Barry Allen in in general. Seeing a younger version of himself that's pretty much lived a more or less good life. Oh my god, I wanted to hit this version of the character so bad. <clears throat> However, it does get redeemed in the last half and the second half of the movie where the two Barrys visit the Michael Keaton version of Batman. And this is the part of the movie that I actually liked. <clears throat> this is the part of the movie that I enjoyed. Now, granted, is it nostalgia bait? Absolutely. Don't let no one tell you differently. However, <clears throat> Are, am I gonna die? Am I am I going to deny and say that it wasn't cool? Hell no! Seeing Michael Keaton again don the suit of Batman was fucking awesome, and Michael Keaton always puts in a good performance. And Michael Keaton in this movie, he was one of the actors that was clearly not going. That he was that was clearly trying to turn in a decent and good performance. He fit. He <clears throat> Michael Keaton playing the role of Bruce Wayne Batman. It was as if he had just got done doing Batman Returns. It felt like he just did Batman Returns two years before he did this movie. It's like he never left. Him playing an old, him playing a much more older version of Bruce Wayne. Specifically, his version of Bruce Wayne was fantastic. I think the whole thing of him trying to explain the multiverse with spaghetti was absolutely stupid and silly, but that's beyond the point. Not only that, I don't think I don't think Christina Hodgson really understood the '89 version of Batman because if you actually watch that movie. 
that version of Batman wasn't doing fight scenes to popular music. Don't say Prince, that's not true. Not one time in Batman 89 did Batman do a fight scene with Prince playing in the background. The music, Prince's music was prevalent in that movie, but it was never during action sequences. <clears throat> but I digress. But no, just seeing, you know, just seeing the old stately Wayne Manor from the 89 verse and just seeing Michael Keaton don the costume was fantastic. I like the updated look of the Batman, of the, of the 89 Batman costume. And I just love seeing this version of Batman in action when, when the two Barrys along with Batman go to Siberia in order to save, a, in order to save Superman. Or they think it's Superman, but it ends up being Supergirl. <clears throat> and I'll say this, I thought the inclusion of Supergirl wasn't bad. I thought Sasha, I thought Sasha Cali was actually pretty decent in the role, and I am open to seeing. Well, uh, the the universe has been reset, so who knows if we'll see her even come back in the in the uh, James Gunn universe. But for what she did in this movie, I didn't mind her. I actually, I actually thought Supergirl was very was utilized to the best of her, of her abilities. I like how they didn't spit in the face of Superman, <clears throat> like they didn't make they didn't. It's not they didn't make Superman look like a chode. They actually they actually preserved, you know, they actually preserved Superman and and what he represents through his through Supergirl. So, I don't mind that. I liked it. And I do and I am not going to lie. I do kind of like and I like how they kept the whole idea of Kara Zor-El going with Cal to Earth to be his protector. But then but then the uh Kal-El ship gets intercepted by General Zod and General Zod more or less says that yeah, he killed baby Superman which drives Supergirl into a frenzy where she nearly brutal or she nearly kills Zod. <clears throat> so I like that. I thought Supergirl was fine. And I even like the whole sequence of them going to Siberia trying to get her out trying to uh trying to break her out. That whole action sequence was actually a lot of fun. And that was more or less a showcase for 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 Keaton's Batman and just seeing him in motion, seeing him do things that he couldn't do in the 89 movie being shown more of the athleticism and the use of his gadgets was a lot of fun and of course you get references to the old so some golden dialogue from that movie like how much do you weigh 108 or you want to get nuts let's get nuts and yeah i'm batman <clears throat> like you get those classic nuggets but i also like how this version how keaton's batman wasn't just used as fan service they actually made him more or less integral to the plot in a way because it's it's keaton's batman that ends up giving uh old barry his powers back so basically when barry travels back into this reality he does not have powers anymore so he has to take his younger counterpart to the lab where he gets his lightning powers however what happens is old barry loses his powers as new barry gets his powers so now <clears throat> so now old barry has to train new barry on how to use his powers and it it's and some hol unfunny hilarity ensues with Barry with with new Barry running running across the city, butt ass naked in an unfunny scene. So basically, <clears throat> so basically what happens is that they come they come up with the idea of using an electrical current in order to give old Barry his powers back, and Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne plays a hand in that by using a bat kite. <laughs> he uses the bat kite to cause an, an electrical current. Listen. The 89 movies were, were were dark were dark movies, but they also had a, a nice cheese factor to them. And just seeing that bat kite, you know, you can see that in the 89 movies. So it would be played much more seriously in that one. But just seeing it, you also get a nice, it's a nice, it's also a nice little subtle nod to the Adam West verse. <clears throat> so I, I, I got a chuckle out of that. I kind of like it. <clears throat> but yeah, I do like how this version of... Uh, how this ver uh, I do like how more or less they handle the OG Keaton version of Batman. Like they, he, the base, the reason why he retired in the first place is because Gotham City became one of the safest places in the world to live. So he didn't need to be Batman anymore. But he gets inspired to don the costume because of Barry and 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 Barry pretty much saying, "Hey, listen, we can't break Superman out without you. We need you." So it's more along the lines of. <clears throat> So instead of downplaying Keaton's Batman, you made him a necessity. Like the only way this mission can be accomplished is if they have Batman on his side, on their side. They made Batman wanted, not needed, which I like. And that just and that further raises the mythos of of Batman itself. And not only that, if you're gonna if you're gonna disrespect the Keaton Batman in any way, you would have had a legion of fans ready to chop your head off because that's sacred cow. You don't go. You don't. You don't mistreat Batman '89 because those movies are sacred to a lot of people. 
especially to me because I grew up in nine. I was born in 1990. I grew up with 89 and Batman Returns. That's been my. That's Keaton is my Batman and always will be my Batman. So you have to treat that with some level of reverence. <clears throat> and I overall think this movie did treat it with a level of reverence. So I don't have a whole lot of bad to say because I like I like most of the stuff. Like to me, this movie gets good once Keaton's on screen. That's where the movie act, that's where the movie becomes watchable. Like the first hour before the second hour, not gonna lie, I just it just didn't interest me. It was kind of boring. <clears throat> but again, Keaton just brings the energy and it works. Like for a man who's in his seventies, he's clearly he clearly he clearly has the most energy out of everyone in this entire movie, and it and it, and it really shows. <clears throat> and I also like how they made a nice honorable mention to Michael Go. When Barry said you had an Alfred yourself, that's a nice reference to the late great Michael Go, the OG Alfred. Love it, no complaints. And I also like the nice nod to the Joker laughing bag from Batman '89. And of course, we do see the OG Batmobile, and we see the Batwing. So good stuff. Can't complain. <clears throat> yeah. So now we get to the third act, and I already and I already touched on it earlier. I don't like the whole idea of General Zod being reused. Uh, Andy Muschietti also does a thing where he inserts the Flash and, he, and, and Muschietti does a flashback to Man of Steel where we see Barry early, where we see Barry Allen in an early version of his Flash suit saving people during General Zod's initial invasion in the Prime Universe. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, so now we get to the third act. They're fighting off the General Zod and his aliens, but they keep Bat Keaton's Batman eventually succumbs and loses. Uh, Supergirl ends up dying, and this is what gives Newberry the idea to keep going back in time in order to try and find a way to win. But in every scenario, they just keep losing and keep losing and keep losing, to the point where they get sucked into the flash, into the into the Speed Force, where they have to handle a dark version, where they have to handle the Dark Flash, <clears throat> which is basically a corrupted version of Newberry. Now, throughout the movie, when Barry's traveling through time, we do see the Dark Flash appear here and there kicking Barry out of the Speed Force. <clears throat> and it's actually Barry being kicked out of the Speed Force when first meeting Dark Flash is what sets the events of this movie and him being in the in the Flashpoint and the Flash and the alternate verse. <clears throat> but uh we get to the third act where the Dark Flash <clears throat> where the Dark Flash plays a much more prominent role. And this is where we get to Cameo Central, in which we see the different versions of the multiverse and we see different versions of Superman. Now listen all the controversy aside and shit like that, and I know a lot of people do not like this scene, but I'm not gonna lie. <clears throat> I kinda like this scene. I thought this scene was actually pretty cool, seeing all the different multiverses converge, collapsing with one another. No, we get a nice reference to Batman 89. We get a re we we see we get a we get a um, we get a CGI uh, resurrection of the George Reeves Superman from the 50s. We get to see a resurrected Christopher Reeve with Helen Slater in the in the Superman 79 verse. And yes, this also presents my favorite scene in this whole movie. <clears throat> a scene that is just so ridiculous. And it's based off a movie that should have happened but never happened. We finally get a chance to see the Nicolas Cage version of Superman on screen fighting a giant spider. <clears throat> this is the best 45 seconds of the entire movie. Just seeing Nicolas Cage, even though he's CGI'd, it's the fact that Nicolas Cage, that a that a version of Nicolas Cage's Superman finally exists on screen fighting a giant spider. I do not care. I love it. I like it. <clears throat> and you cannot tell me otherwise because fuck yeah, Nicolas Cage, he got fucking robbed. He should have had that movie made. <clears throat> but Andy Muschietti played to my nostalgia goggles and gave me my Nicolas Cage Superman. And yeah, it's 30 seconds of just him killing a giant spider. I don't have to complain. I like it. <clears throat> and the fact that they actually got Nicolas Cage to actually do, to actually film that scene, despite him being digitally DH, it's the fact that he actually did the scene in, in person just makes it even more sweeter. <clears throat> so yeah, that stuff I liked. The whole thing with the Dark Flash, it was whatever. It was okay. It's basically a corrupted version of, of uh, alternate 2013 Barry. Uh, the young, new Barry sacrifices himself as the Dark version of Flash is about to kill him. <clears throat> 
and uh, but once Dark Flash kills his younger self, he disappears, and then Barry has the and then Barry comes to the realization that his mother has to die in order for him to pretty much set the timeline right. To which he goes to the convenience store and moves the can of tomatoes to a point where she can't where she forgets them. But he also does a thing where he moves a can of tomatoes to that way his father's face is seen on a security camera in order for him or in order for his name to be cleared. <clears throat> but this also leads to a very, very tender scene between a mother, between Barry's mom and her son. And it is very emotional and very well played. <clears throat> and then we get to the last five minutes. Barry's dad's exonerated. Flash gets a call from another Bruce Wayne. And lo and behold, we get George Clooney reprising his role from Batman from Batman and Robin as a as Bruce Wayne. This movie more or less presents the idea that Barry Allen has transported himself into the Batman and Robin universe or just any or a universe where George Clooney is Bruce Wayne and is completely disconnected from the move from Batman and Robin in general. <clears throat> uh, whew. So, yeah, that's how this movie ends. And then oh yeah, I forgot. You get this post credit stinger of Flash and Aquaman hanging out and the scene's not funny. It's just whatever. So, okay, that's that. Oh damn. So yeah, this was a very, very long review, but those were overall my thoughts on the Flash movie. And I'm just going to say this. It's a movie that you can clearly see has potential, but you can also see that a lot of the drama that went into it clearly shows on screen. And it really hinders this movie from being something cool. To me, this movie's biggest hindrance, aside from Ezra Miller, it's just this movie trying to juggle too many different storylines and not knowing what to do with them. It wants to tell a story of Barry trying to exonerate his dad. It wants to tell a story of Barry of Barry uh, wanting to make sure his mom doesn't die. And then it tells the story of Flashpoint where Barry <clears throat> where Barry has to go back to his timeline and in so doing so also has to stop an alien invasion from General Zod and also has to uh, save uh, <clears throat> and also has to team up with Supergirl. Like this movie is trying to juggle so many different things when it should have just been more basic. You could have still done a Flashpoint story, take out the Superman element, and just throw in Reverse Flash. You could still have Super... Excuse me. Mm, excuse me. You can still have Supergirl play a role in this movie, even with the Reverse Flash. Even with Reverse Flash as the lead villain. It still would have worked to an extent. But you more or less made this movie... Con too connected to what came before it and it just brings the movie down as a whole and I don't feel like I'm watching a Flash movie I feel like I'm watching a Flash movie that takes place that that's more or less a side story of Man of Steel and I don't like that I want to see a Flash story that's in a that's in a that's in the universe that's inhabited by the Flash where Flash fights his own villains and not someone else's villains so yeah <clears throat> and of course you do the visual aesthetics in this movie can be very hit and miss in a lot of areas the cgi even is not that great even though i do like cameo central the cgi for that scene for that entire sequence in the, uh, in the speed force is not great at all like the cgi looks terrible and the deep fake in nicholas cage does look like crap but but i give it points because it's nicholas cage superman finally on screen so i can't i don't really have nothing to complain about uh but yeah with all that being said, to me, The Flash gets a 5 out of 10. It's not the worst superhero movie ever made. It's one of the most frustrating superhero movies ever made. Because you can see that they were handcuffed. And that this movie was riddled by just so many problems. Reshoots, restructuring, your lead actor being a complete and total dipshit. The the writing is you can tell that that multiple people worked on this that multiple writers wrote this movie and all these ideas just don't gel in a coherent way. But you do have a lot of bright spots. Michael Keaton's Batman and the entire second half for the most part is a bright spot. Some of the action sequences are bright spots. Some of the cameos they worked they work to an extent. Seeing George Clooney as come come as, come back as Bruce Wayne, even though it's just a, a teaser, I ain't gonna lie. I like it. I'm one of those people who who views Batman and Robin for what it is, which is a bad movie, but also a funny movie. <clears throat> and just seeing George Clooney, yeah, I'm not going to lie. It, it got to put a smile on my face because I've stated for a long time that if George Clooney had a better script, he could actually be a very good Bruce Wayne and a very good Batman. 
Uh, so yeah, five out of 10 for the flash. Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I'll check you back next time for more.